channel it's a girl Lissy and today guys we're gonna be talking about some of the most horrifying terrifying cursed creepiest kid shows that have ever been designed or put onto the base of this earth because these shows should not have been ever designed and developed or aired on television because they will give you nightmares if you guys are new here hi my name is Lissy I post videos about the strange the unusual the creepy and the haunted and you guys should subscribe so that you guys never miss out on a single video and also smash a like if you guys are excited for today's video and agree that this character on the screen is terrifying. So basically, like I said, we're gonna be looking at some of the worst, scariest kid shows that were ever designed and some lost tapes from TV shows that somehow were aired and then taken off TV because they were so scary. And the tapes for these kid shows were lost, but some of them might have been found. The tea is hot, brace yourself, and let's get talking about this. So the first kid show we're gonna be talking about that was aired on TV was a show called Jigsaw. Jigsaw was a British television series that came out in the 70s. Jigsaw is a BBC show aimed at children between the ages of four and seven years old. Yes, you heard me, four and seven. Why did it look like this if it was trying to appeal to such a young audience? Beats me, I wish I knew too. It combined elements of puzzle solving and entertainment that the kids, when they watched the show, they were supposed to help solve the puzzles and be entertained by the brainstorming of the show. Like it was all just a puzzle solving show, I guess. It was broadcasted from the 16th of July in 1979 until June 15th of 1980 until it was completely cut off air because it was scaring people. Parents and children were horrified of one specific element of the show, if you guys haven't already guessed, and that was Mr. Freaking Nosy Bonk. Mr. Nosy Bonk. What kind of name is Mr. Nosy Bonk? Like in the first place. This was possibly the most horrifying character I've ever seen. He wore a dinner suit with a huge white mask and during episodes of the show, Mr. Nosy Bonk was often seen giving clues while acting like a mime, only doing hand gestures and saying nothing while he tried to help kids that are watching the show or in the show solve the puzzles by just doing a bunch of weird hand motions and gestures without saying anything. <laughs> He was extremely quiet, which of course added to the awkwardness and creepiness of this character and the show. A lot of people found this character to be extremely unsettling, and a lot of children were horrified of this show, just let alone because of Mr. Nosy Bomb. And honestly, I cannot blame them one single freaking bit, because this thing is gonna give me nightmares. And ever since he has returned onto the internet, a bunch of horror sketches have even been made about Mr. Nosy Bonk, and he's even been created into creepy pastas all over the internet. And even more concerning was that some of the fan art was made into a Tumblr page called Sexy Man Mr. Nosy Bonk, where people fetishize this character. Don't ask me why. I don't know what they were. I, that's concerning to me because this character is freaking creepy. He's hot. No, he's not. <laughs> Also, I want to mention that apparently in the show, Mr. Nosy Bonk had some mental issues and some very serious anger problems. Mr. Nosy Bonk was alright and content with humanity and humility until Mr. Bean was released by his UFO in 1990 on the popular streets of London. That was when he became completely obsessed with Mr. Bean due to his schizophrenia after taking his anti-health pills by a mysterious Dixmore scientist and it went untreated, resulting in his sight to shatter like a window and he spiraled into to complete madness, which doesn't even make sense. This show became so unsettling, it was actually pulled off television, and the tapes were supposedly lost. Since it was scaring so many kids and parents, it had to stop being aired. However, there has been some leaks of the tapes that have been put onto YouTube, and they're really creepy, so I don't recommend checking them out, so. That's the tea about Mr. Nosy Bonk. That show is very creepy. So the next horrifying kids show that we're gonna be covering is called Peppermint Park. Peppermint Park is a direct to video children's show consisting of six volumes released in 1987 and 1988 on VHS. The show is a mixture of live action, animation, and puppets. My favorite. We love creepy puppets. Characters included Ernie, who sang a song about the letter M, Snorky, a reptile who's often oblivious to his surrounding and lacks common sense, Maynard, an elderly old man who laminates over his wasted youth, and Piggy, a pig with a big appetite whose voice was similar to that of Kermit the Frog. Many of the show's elements seem to have been copied from Sesame Street. It really feels like they got a lot of inspiration just from Sesame Street with their show. They're basically like a Walmart version of Sesame Street. Boys and girls, 
Here's something you can do when you can't go to the park. Or maybe your friends can't come over to play. One of the main characters named Ernie was a giant horrifying puppet who would try to scare the children as they watched the show. Well, he did scare the children. Like, the way that he looked and the way that he sang, it was creepy. He would sing unsettling songs and attempt to teach the children and or viewers about the alphabet or other useful things in life. His voice was also ridiculous. I just want to point that out. I don't know why they, you know, casted whoever they did to play the voice of this puppet, but the voice just was not it. Also, I just want to mention that this puppet was bigger than the size of an average adult human. Yes. Yeah, take that in. This puppet is freaking huge. Why is he so big? I really don't know and I didn't want to know, but he was a big, big boy. I'm not sure who thought this show was a good idea or who thought that children are gonna sit on the screen and watch this puppet sing about the letter M. M. It's such a great letter. Just think of all the words that start with M. It's marvelous. But definitely not me, especially if I'm a kid, that's the last thing I want to be watching. So the next show that we're going to be talking about is called Molly Grubs. Molly Grubs was an Australian TV show for preschoolers featuring storytelling, music, puppets, and a animated face. It was actually mostly remembered just for the single face that was aired on this TV show because parents and kids that watch the show remember this face so vividly from like actually traumatizing them as a child when they put this show on TV. The face was literally just eyebrows, eyes, huge eyelashes that look like they're about to fly away bigger than mine, a mouth, and uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. Like, there was no actual facial feet. It was just a floating face with a blue backdrop, and it scared the heck out of kids and parents that were watching the show, because the show would be completely normal, and all of a sudden you just see a blue screen with like a floating face appear and start talking. She was horrifying. Don't want to know her. Did you see the kangaroos? They have tiny front paws and big back legs. Also, there was a weird theory about this face. Apparently, people didn't know who played the role of the face. Like, it was hidden for a long, long time. And people were starting to get concerned, especially parents that were like letting their kids watch the show were like, what are they trying to hide? People thought they were trying to hide the identity. Basically, they thought the director was trying to hide who's playing the role of the face, and that's why they didn't want to reveal her or whoever was playing the role for some mysterious reason until a few years ago when she finally came out and she revealed that she was the scary blue green screen face lady <laughs> and I don't know why they were hiding it for all these years it was like they were trying to keep something from us um, or that she you know didn't want to be accused for being the scary face lady with the green screen scaring everybody's children anyways moving along we're gonna be talking about the next show so the next creepy show was called the Pops program Pops program is a children television program which was broadcasted in the United Kingdom on Channel 4. The program is presented by a puppet named Pob, played by the puppeteer Robin Stevens, who speaks with a speech impediment and who supposedly lives inside of the viewer's television. So yes, this puppet that you see on the screen was supposed to live inside of your TV. Pop spoke Welsh and supposedly the concept to him was that he was supposed to live within or inside, like I said, the viewer's television. As you guys could already guess or assume, some children did actually believe and began to panic that Pob, the puppet, really did live inside of their television. So much so that some kids would start to get scared in the morning when they were having their cereal, when they put this show on, that Pob was just gonna straight up burst through their television and appear in their living room. And so much so that some of them were so attached to the show that their parents would try to turn it off and the kids would start hysterically crying, no, don't turn it off, Pob's gonna die! Because they thought if you turn off the television show that this puppet named Pob, who was living inside their television, would actually die if they turned the show off, which became very problematic for a lot of parents, of course. As you know, that would not end well. Pop was supposed to be a goblin baby, and he wore a pink and yellow striped jumper, and so many kids began to worry about the factor and the fear that he lived inside of the television. They really did begin thinking that it was real, and of course, that show didn't end up blasting very long because of the fear. It was put in the children's minds and imagination. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a good thing though, because Pop is really, really ugly, so I wouldn't want him popping out of my TV either. <laughs> and last but not least, the last children's show that we're going to be spilling some tea on is called Donkey, Morso, and Moru. Never heard of it until 
I found it today and it was creepy, so I wanted to share it with you guys. This is a Finnish kids show that ran from 1999 to 2001. And it wouldn't have made my list if it weren't for one character specifically, and that character is more so. I hope I said his name right. It was based on a children's book, and the story tells of a donkey overcoming his fear of more so with the help of his friend Moru. It's easy to see why donkey was scared of more so, if you couldn't already tell. This puppet of a sheep was freaking horrifying. It also didn't help that Morso had a tendency to pop up from behind fences or peer in windows like a literal creeper during the show. These puppets had an unsettling human-like face molded into them and the main character's eyes looked like they were constantly popping out of his head and or that he was looking at something with fear constantly. Like he had a fear-driven face like just implanted into him at all times, which kind of concerns me. I wouldn't want to watch this if I was a kid. Although the show was all in Finnish, the characters' voices were very, very low and deep and kind of growly, which made it even worse, even though I have no idea what the characters are saying because I don't speak Finnish. But if I was a kid and if I was in Finland and that was on TV, I would be shutting it off. I don't need to be seeing those animal puppets that look like humans who look distressed, so no thank you. If you guys grew up watching Barney, you're probably around my age, so I'm guessing in your early 20s. But if you guys don't know who Barney is, let me tell you guys who Barney the dinosaur is. Barney is a 200 million two dinosaur year old. I didn't know Barney was that old. Six foot tall. Wow, he's taller than me by one inch. Wow, okay, I am tall. Purple Tyrannosaurus Rex with a green belly, green spots on his back, and his tail and yellow toes, but he's mostly purple. He comes to life through a child's imagination. He is best known for his silly, optimistic attitude. I love you. He was created first in 1987 by Cheryl Leach, who was looking for a way to entertain her two-year-old son named Patrick. Originally, Barney was going to be a blanket. When that was proven to be too hard, he became a teddy bear who came to life. Patrick was fascinated by the dinosaur exhibit at a museum, in particular the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Did I say that right? T-Rex. <laughs> so the idea of Barney in general seems pretty innocent, right? Just a big T-Rex that a little kid wanted to be entertained by of a little plushie that came to life to an actual dinosaur. Pretty cute and innocent. However, Barney the dinosaur has a whole dark twist. I There's a lot of extremely creepy and concerning conspiracies about this purple, big, tall, thick dinosaur, and it's about to get spicy. This first conspiracy I found is insane. Barney was possibly based on a 1930s serial killer. I know that the other things said it wasn't, but who really knows? There's conspiracies for everything. Rumor has it that Barney the Dinosaur is based off of a man named Barney that in his 30s would go to a theme park dressed as a big purple dinosaur. This was an attempt to draw kids into him. He would kidnap them and then force them to all act like they were happy or he would brutally murder them and take them to his home. Um, there's more aggressive things in this theory that I'm not going to read because we're family friendly here, but that is actually terrifying. That somebody would try to dress up as a big purple dinosaur to lure kids towards them at the park. First off, if I saw this, I don't think I want to run up to it, even if I knew who Barney was. I feel like, did I like Barney as a kid? I don't know, I feel like he scared me. So I don't really know, Barney is a little bit sus. I mean, we should probably vote purple out, guys. Let's eject him. Here is another really dark Barney theory that I found online. So here's what this person wrote about Barney. So just like I, any other child growing up in their 90s watched the TV show Barney. I had every cassette tape of it, even the backyard gang in the concert one. I heard the theme song to an old episode a couple of months ago. My sisters were making fun of it. Now that I'm 21, I can actually understand the theme song and all the lyrics written. It says that Barney lives with all the kids in the show, but then it says Tina and Lucy are sisters, as if implying they're all from separate families. Not to mention that they had the kids' parents on the show and they were all different people. So the conclusion here is what they're saying is what if Barney and the Backyard Gang is not happy and cheerful as they seem? What if the show is based on something more dark and possibly more real? What if these kids are all foster siblings in an orphanage and they are all having a difficult time dealing with being taken from their homes or their families and maybe Barney is an imaginary friend that they dreamt up in an attempt to have someone to show them the love and escape from the attention that they never had or 
forgot growing up in an orphanage. Um, that is kind of creepy because it does say Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination and there's a bunch of kids in the show. So I mean, that conspiracy really does hit deep. If you think about it, maybe those kids are trying to escape from a childhood they didn't have and that's why they say that Barney is a dinosaur from their imagination and maybe they're not really happy. That's weird too! There's a lot of weird stuff about Barney the dinosaur on the internet. Alright, this by far is one of the most terrifying conspiracies about Barney the dinosaur that I have found. Have you guys heard about Barney's Lost episode? Apparently this episode was going to be aired on TV and well, it was, but not for long. So the people that did see this episode of Barney that was taken off very soon afterwards said that it aired at 3am, which means you should never watch Barney the dinosaur at 3 a.m. So this person wrote about the Barney Lost episode because apparently they were there to witness it. So here is the story. Barney is my favorite show. Well, it used to be until last night. Yesterday, I was looking at my TV guide and I saw something that caught my eye. I thought I saw a commercial. Tonight only, a lost episode of Barney and Friends, first and only chance to see it, and it airs only at 3 a.m. Naturally, I hated that show, but I had the chance to see the lost episode at 2.59 a.m. since I was awake. So I turned the TV on and sat down. It was at the moment the episode came on and the Barney theme song started to play. However, something was not right. For some reason, when I played this Barney theme song, I heard some kind of whispering within the Barney theme song audio that didn't used to be there. I'm sure most of us do know the Barney theme song. It's pretty iconic. Barney is the dinosaur. I had never have heard any whispering in that, so for them to say that, a little bit suspicious. For starters, the video quality was also very bad and the audio sounded very distorted. It was whispering, it sounded creepy, but I shrugged it off, assuring myself that it was just my imagination. What a coincidence. The episode began like it always does, with the kids talking about something while holding the doll version of Barney the Dinosaur. Then poof. He comes to life giggling like an actual psychopath. He was gargling out of his mouth, giggling just like a demonic dinosaur. Like Barney would never make those kind of laughs or giggles. Something was not right with Barney. Barney sounded very weird, as if two people were talking at once. One with his normal voice and another that sounded very demonic. I tried to ignore it and that's when I heard Barney say, hi kids with childish giggling, today I'm going to teach you about death. That would be the point where I block Barney off my children's TV devices. <laughs> That is scary, no more Barney the Dinosaur. Um, but the show kept going. One of the children looked up at him and said, What's death, Barney? Barney replied demonically, This is. His face suddenly turned angry. He grew long, sharp teeth and he laughed evilly. And then he ate one of the children. Barney ate a child? My children kept watching, not concerned about any of this. Barney then proceeded to eat some of the children one by one, each time roaring. The children at this point started to run away from Barney, screaming and crying for their parents to save them. Barney just chuckled evilly and said in a demonic voice, Mommy and Daddy can't help you! And then he chewed on the children until the children broke in half. Then the green girl dinosaur and the yellow dinosaur came in and apparently not noticing the dead children. Well, Barney, the green one said, What did we learn today? Barney grinned an evil grin and said directly to the camera, Remember, kitties, don't bother locking your doors or hiding under your beds because sooner or later, I will find you and I will eat all of you. The rest of the episode showed a distorted picture of Barney the Dinosaur with a blood curdling scream. That was the last straw. I then reached for the TV remote and I turned it off. I looked to my left and then I realized my children were nowhere to be seen. You know what? That's very concerning to say the least. I don't know how to feel about the energy created in the room today. It's pretty late right now. In fact, it is 3 a.m. I don't know why I'm reading scary Barney stories, but what if I find a scary Barney video? All right, so one of the things I wanted to address about looking up these Barney movies and clips at 3 a.m. is I found a lot of ones that claim that Barney cursed during the show. So there's a bunch of clips here, as you guys can see. I'll put them on the screen. If you guys want to look them up, you can. Um, this one says Barney curses. I'm going to play it and see what it says. I just want to see if Barney really does swear because it's a kid show. He's not supposed to. Oh, boy, oh boy, do you mean an actual, honest-to-goodness, real-life- I 
sure do. People are editing Barney in these videos to make it sound like he's swearing. I mean, yeah, that did sound a little weird. Um, obviously, I'm going to bleep it out because we're a family-friendly channel. If you guys want to look those up, go ahead. But I think people edited those. <laughs> like, I don't see Barney ever cursing on TV. I mean, the Lost episode does sound kind of strange, not going to lie. Let's see if we can try to find the Lost episode. Barney, the Lost episode? Wait, what is this? Hi, PJ. Hey. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> you want to play with me and my balloon? Man, I do not miss this show. The way that the dinosaur's mouse move is just really scary. Can we talk about how the kids in Barney look like they're like at least 12 to 13, but are like forced to act like they're like six years old? I'm pretty sure that's not the Barney Loss episode, but if I could find it, that would be golden. I really don't want to watch Barney movies at 3 a.m. Because Barney has some really dark secrets, guys. Like, really dark secret. The Simpsons. Yes, the Simpsons, those yellow little people. They actually have like a whole theme park dedicated to them at Universal, which I love a lot. However, the Simpsons just have always scared people a little bit. And let me cover a reason as to why. Before I get into the last episode tea, basically the Simpsons has been predicting things for years. Like years on ends, they will make an episode of something predicting something or showing subliminal messages about something. And then later on, they predict an actual event or thing that happened. And people are actually a little bit afraid of the Simpsons for these reasons like they've put some pretty dramatic like guesses out there even predicting COVID. This episode was called the Oseka flu. Don't worry people we have enough vaccines for one child per family. And even in this episode, they predicted the killer bees that we had a while ago. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I remember like in the beginning of COVID when it first started, that there was these like really crazy killer bees or killer wasps or something that were going around the USA stinging and killing people. They predicted that too. Stop! And not only did they predict that, but they also predicted Apple iPhones. The Simpsons predicted them in 1995 through 1996 seasons. Granted, Lisa was FaceTiming in that episode. And not only that, they predicted a real tiger attack. Ten years before the tiger would actually attack Roy and Horn during a live performance, The Simpsons featured an episode where the duo would be attacked by a actual white tiger. That is so creepy to me. I don't know how they're predicting all of these different things in their episodes, and there's so many more theories about that that I can go on and on and on about, but if you guys want a separate video about that, let me know. However, the concern about a last episode begins when a lot of people say they were watching The Simpsons one night, and it randomly switched their TV to an episode about Bart. This episode was called Dead Bart. So during this episode, apparently Bart was sucked out of the window by a plane. In the cemetery where he was buried, there was headstones featuring death dates of every Simpsons guest that was ever made and that will ever be in the show. So basically what it's trying to say was that they predicted every Simpsons character's death somehow, and it was really eerie and creepy to a lot of people. They also say that you can't find this episode anymore, and that's also sketchy enough that they had to take it off the TV for some reason. So the next one is called Suicide Mouse. Um, it and it's kind of terrifying. Basically, you guys know Mickey Mouse, and there was apparently an old episode about Mickey Mouse that was so dark and so bad and not supposed to be aired on TV, but it somehow got leaked around the interweb. In 1929, there was a cartoon started with Mickey Mouse called Strollin' in Town. Mickey Mouse was walking until he saw a man that looked like Mel Blanc and thought it was a toy. He was hiding under it. He then took the man's eyes out and was covered in blood and he couldn't see until he walked all the blood off of himself. So people claim this was a really creepy, dark episode where Mickey Mouse was just walking and walking and walking. Apparently after the screen cut to black, it stayed like that until the sixth minute before going back to Mickey Mouse walking. The sounds on the screen changed and there was murmurs. It wasn't really a language being played on this episode. It was more like a gurgled cry as Mickey Mouse walked. And apparently Mickey's grin and smile on his face grew bigger and bigger and bigger the more he walked down this paved sidewalk. It terrified children. It literally traumatized people. Even adults were terrified and traumatized after watching this lost episode of Mickey Mouse that was super old and creepy. <laughs> So the next one we're going to be talking about is Dora the Explorer. So I'm sure that we all know of Dora the Explorer because, you know, who doesn't? But basically, Dora the Explorer had a last episode that made a lot of children extremely, extremely concerned. But the weirdest part about this last episode is that parents claimed that they did not see it while their kids were claiming they were watching it. Parents said that they would see their kids crying and they were like, Mom, Mom, something's wrong with Dora. The parents would go check it out and they would say, No, there's nothing wrong. This is a normal episode. But all the kids were like, no, no, 
this is a real thing. Like, something's wrong with Dora. So, the urban legend here is that only the children could see the problem with this very specific lost episode of Dora the Explorer, and the parents were just creeped out that their kids were so traumatized. So, basically, in this episode, when the Dora theme song started, it sounded like the theme in the earlier episode, but with many changes. Then, eventually, the screen flashed to Dora, continuing on, saying, I need your help! I need your help! Will you help me find something to do? You will? Come on! Vamanos! Let's go! Then, after she got downstairs, she told her parents she was exploring, but they were not answering to her. Dora then pulled out a scribble piece of paper and imitated the map because she couldn't find her map. Then she said she had to cross Troll Bridge. Dora then walked down a few yards and stopped where the Troll Bridge was. Then suddenly a random man approached Dora on the screen which was not a regular character of the show. Kids were confused as to who this man was because they had no idea. And he said to Dora, do you have some money? Dora then looked at him and said, oh now grumpy old troll, what is your riddle? Because Dora thought that this man was a troll. They, she had to pass the bridge to get by when she didn't know that it wasn't a troll and that something was about to go wrong. The man then said, What are you saying, girl? Why do you always have to do this every day? Dora then said, Thank you for letting me over the bridge, grumpy old troll. Then the man said, Go away and die, Dora. And the whole screen flashed while Dora let a blood-crippling scream out of her lungs and the episode said the end. Kids were so traumatized, they were worried about Dora, they did not understand what that man wanted from her. The kids who saw this episode of Dora never watched it again. The parents were confused because it seemed like a normal episode of Dora that would run all the time and they hadn't seen anything wrong. So the next episode we're going to be talking about is the Powerpuff Girls. I actually used to love the Powerpuff Girls when I was little. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. I was a huge Bubbles fan because Bubbles kind of reminds me of myself. I feel like if I was in the Powerpuff Girls I would definitely be Bubbles. But there is a story about Bubbles, the character I like a lot. There was supposed to be a dark lost episode that some people claim to have seen but I think this is more based on of a creepypasta. During this episode they say that Bubble looked very ill and confused and dazed and lost and she said things and did things that she normally would never do and people said she had a dark, low, grumbling, evil sounding voice in this episode. The professor tried to do everything he could to help Bubbles throughout this episode but nothing ended up working to the point where at the end of the episode all the Powerpuff Girls tried everything they could and Bubbles said leave me alone in a dark eerie voice and then she blatantly dropped to the floor and the episode ended, which terrified children and concerned a lot of parents at the time because some parents claimed they actually had seen this last episode of the Powerpuff Girls. And as you guys know, Bubbles has a very like bubbly voice and she has a bubbly personality so that would be so out of character for her to do. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about the last episode of The Amazing World of Gumball. So this show I actually don't remember watching too much of out of all the shows I've mentioned previously. I watched them pretty good amounts of time. But The Amazing World of Gumball I did not watch too much of so I actually was surprised to hear about this story. So this animated series was not about chewing gum by the way. It's about a cat named Gumball Watterson. Gumball has kind of like a personality for getting into trouble or getting into schemes that he gets into, but he never learns his lesson. Gumball's best friend is a fish named Darwin who used to be a family pet until he grew legs and became part of the family. And that is kind of weird, honestly. I don't know what was going on in the show. Gumball also hates his younger sister because she is the smartest member of the family. However, people claim there is a last episode of Gumball called The Grieving Episode. And let me tell you why it's called this. It started off slow, but then switched to Gumball just crying in a classroom like never before. He sounded dark and depressed, and he was crying kind of normally until his cries and weeps became louder and louder and more concerning throughout the episode. <laughs> Eventually, after he cried for some time, the scream began to glitch on this specific episode. It glitched to something very concerning. Gumball was fine, but he started to walk crying with his head weeped down, going, ah, ha, ha, ha. and then it would show flashings of all the other main characters dead on the ground. And at the very end of the episode, Gumball just cries harder and harder, and all the characters are dead. And then the episode just magically switches to an end screen. And not only that, but Cartoon Network even kind of addressed this episode. They put a video on their Cartoon Network YouTube channel addressing the last episode and they get to a point where it's just some chihuahuas playing an instrument. Maybe it's not just a creepypasta and maybe Cartoon Network was trying to distract us with a funny meme. Who knows? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you guys think you've ever seen a lost episode? Do you guys believe in them? And what other creepy episodes or theories do you guys want me to cover in future videos? Let me know guys. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure to check out my other social medias. I'll have 
the link down below guys and be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button and make sure that your bell is turned on so you guys do not miss another video from me ever again. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys! show on a British TV program that was produced by Ragdoll Productions. The boobas are five gumdrop shaped creatures with large eyes and the lights in their head for eyebrows. Their heads are shriveled up into their necks like some weird sort of caterpillar creature and they creepily move around and fly with each other in the sky. And boobas do not speak, okay? They only speak in their own little booba language. <laughs> Instead, they communicate by making noises like squeaks and cracks as their way of communicating in their own language. Even adults that had children that watched the boobas found the boobas to be terrifying. I mean, how could you not? Like, if I had a kid watching this, I'd be slightly concerned for my child. Just in the fact that I'd be like, why? There's so many cute things on TV, but why? Why the boobas? <laughs> the name is already not good in the first place. Booba? <laughs> like, what were they thinking? It's a kid's show. Booba. There's just something super unsettling about the way that the boobas walk around and move and dance around on the screen. And the boobas even have a website that's straight up cursed. If you go to this website, it has distorted music and creepy flash games that honestly, in my opinion, would not entertain anybody who's above the age of three because the website itself is just like, what is happening? What the f is going on? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Honestly, they just remind me of a more cursed version of a Teletubby, in my opinion, with a more weirder plot twist to it. Boobas were also described as magical atoms of energy, and they were played by actors in full-blown costume bodysuits. What? That is the most concerning thing ever. So essentially, actors were under this big mascot costume of a booba. I'm trying to imagine, in my own vision, a full-grown man wearing a booba suit. <laughs> or a full-grown woman. Either or, there's somebody under those suits, and I just, I want to know how that was for them. <laughs> I'm just curious. Eventually, in 2004, filming for Boobas ended, and the show was completely cancelled. And that was the end of the Booba era. Was it a good ending? I don't know. What do you guys think about Boobas? Did you guys ever watch that show? I didn't personally want to watch it, but, um, yeah, I watched the Teletubbies, and that was cursed enough on its own. So the next character we're going to be talking about is called Fofa. I hope I'm saying that right. Fofa was from the island of Dr. Morrow and was an alien born creature from a fictional planet called Fofa Land. It was named after himself. Fafo Landia. Fafo? Fofa? I don't know. Maybe it's Fafo. He came to Earth to form his own band called Balloon Magic with a large group of children that performed alongside him. He actually grew to become quite popular amongst Brazilian children, getting to have their own program, dolls, and other licensed products. However, this is still incredibly freaky to me and the features on this character are just so abnormal and bizarre. Bizarre. I don't understand how this character was appealing to children and not terrifying them to like run away from their televisions. He had notably strange cheeks that would outgrow and sag amongst his chin and just droop down like a very long droopy cheek and his eyes gave off almost a sinister scary rude looking stare that would just stare into your soul. He had a nightmarish appearance and it was completely unintentional by the producers and writers of the show. Accordingly they did not intend to make this character look horrifying. They wanted him to appeal to kids which is really fascinating to me because personally, I don't know where they didn't see this to be a nightmare feel character. What do you guys think? This would give me nightmares personally. Okay, so the next kid show character that we're gonna spill some tea on is one that I've talked about in the past and that is Barney the Big Old Purple Dinosaur. I'm sure we've all watched Barney or at least have heard about Barney the Dinosaur, but Barney the Dinosaur has such a long history to him. So Barney the Dinosaur was a beloved children's character that has been a part of popular culture since the 1990s. Barney was created by Cher in 1987 and the character made his debut on television series Barney and Friends in 1992. The show was designed to educate and entertain young children with Barney and his friends singing songs, dancing, and teaching lessons about teamwork and friendship along the show. And I believe that Cheryl designed Barney for her son, who really loved purple dinosaurs. I don't know, I heard that online somewhere. Although Barney was initially very popular with young children and their parents, the character in the show eventually faced criticism and a lot of controversy along the way. Some people felt the show was too simplistic and that it promoted a one-dimensional, overly optimistic view of the world, while others, on the other half, felt that the character's catchphrases such as, I love you, you love me, 
were overly promoted and the show's repetitive format was not good for their children to hear those words for some reason. I personally don't see anything wrong with the whole I love you, you love me, we're a happy family, but maybe as a kid, the kids can take it in the wrong way. I don't know. I more so had a problem with Barney the dinosaur being a gigantic purple dinosaur that runs around on TV. The suit itself was scary to me. The way that he just stood and looked and his facial features just came off really eerie in my opinion. What do you guys think about Barney? Despite the criticism, Barney remained a popular and enduring cultural icon and the character continues to be loved by many children and adults around the world to this day. So the next character we're going to be talking about is Mr. Blobby. And I've actually covered Mr. Blobby in an entire video before but he is so freaking creepy and cursed that I just wanted to bring him into today's video as well because some of you guys still don't know about Mr. Blobby. So Mr. Blobby is a character that was created and popularized by the British entertainment show Noelle's House Party, which aired on BBC from 1991 to 1999. Mr. Blobby was a large fluffy creature with pink and white striped body and a round smiling face. He was known for his wacky antics and his tendency to cause chaos wherever he went. He had big old googly eyes and he only talked in his own blobby language. So he would say things like blobby 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 and it almost sounded robotic and he even sang his own blobby songs which were terrifying. He even released a Christmas single called Mr. Blobby in 1993, which became a chart-topping hit in the United Kingdom. And he even had a theme park designed after his show because people loved him so much. What? Why? I don't understand. He's so creepy. Despite his initial popularity, Mr. Blobby eventually faced criticism and backlash during his career. Some people felt that the character was childish and overly simplistic, and others found him annoying or even frightening. Despite this, Mr. Blobby remained a popular and memorable culture icon icon and continues to be remembered by many people as a symbol of the 1990s British and pop culture era. What do you guys think about Mr. Blobby? Would you have watched that show growing up as a kid or would you have been horrified? I for one don't know. Maybe I would have found it kind of funny but also terrifying. So the next children's show that we're going to be covering today that might have given you nightmares as a kid was The Wiggles. I actually watched The Wiggles as a kid. Don't ask why. I don't know. My family put it on for me. But not The Wiggles in specific that we're going to be covering that actually is kind of scary but the puppets that they put on the show as show filler were the problem here. So The Wiggles are an Australian children's entertainment group that was formed in Sydney in 1991. The group originally consisted of Anthony, Murray, Greg, and Jeff and they became known for their energetic performances and very catchy, catchy music that aimed at children. In fact, so catchy that I still remember some of the songs that they played on the show, such as Fruit Salad, Yummy Yummy. It was so catchy. The Wiggles often use puppets as a part of their performance in educational videos. The puppets were designed and built by the group's founding member, Anthony, and they included characters such as Dorothy the Dinosaur, Wags the Dog, and Henry the Octopus. They were actually based on Alvin and the Chickmunks because that was super popular back then so they got some inspiration from that to make these puppets and they thought it was a good idea to add this element to the show and really spice up their show with these puppets but it really wasn't these puppets were horrifying they had their own unique personalities and styles and their voices were pitched up to sound like a very high-pitched rodent resembling the Alvin and the chickmunks sort of feel <laughs> They moved in an odd and bizarre manner and they had very strange puppetry to go along with their very odd movements. They always had these big, creepy, firm plastered smiles amongst their face like they were grinning so hard that their cheeks hurted and their eyes were absolutely huge. And they appeared on a screen to be large and beady. Yeah. It felt like we were watching more of a horror film than we were actually watching a children's show when you saw these puppets emerge on the Wiggles. So of course the Wiggles gained a lot of popularity for a very long time and they even were still popular till today. I think I recently saw on TikTok that there was a Wiggles comeback concert where adults that were my age, because this was the age group of like the Wiggles viewers, went back to watch the Wiggles perform as full grown adults, which is kind of crazy. Wizbit. And the character's name itself was Wizbit. Wizbit is a 1980s BBC children's TV show about an alien magician named Wizbit. It starred the established TV stage and stage magician Paul Daniels and his assistant Debbie McGee. The series is set in Puzzletopia, a town inhabited by walking, talking, spongeball, dice, magic wands, playing cards, and even rabbits. And in this world, the protagonist must solve puzzles along the way. Wizbit's year and a day mission is to find out all about planet Earth. The show is actually partially educational, yes. Somehow 
how this cursed show is partially educational, even though it looks like this. Oh, oh, oh. And it would literally terrify me to even sit in front of the TV show and make myself watch this to learn anything. When I'm staring at Wisbit here on the screen, who makes me literally question the existence of my own life. So Wisbit is a large yellow cone-shaped wizard's hat, voiced by Paul Daniels and played by Tony Friel. Yeah, that's the person inside of Wisbit. Wooly is another character from the show. He is an eight foot tall white rabbit and he's the best friend of Wisbit. Wouldn't you guess that? And he's also voiced by Paul Daniels. Squidry Bog is a purple swamp monster voiced by Martin Daniel, and Professor Doom is a mustached evil genius arch-villain who lives in a castle which sits atop a giant stone fist in the sky. I don't know who directed this show, who thought this was a good concept, or what they were, you know, smoking when they made this, but the show is just all very, very creepy and very strange. Don't even know how somebody thought about these ideas in the very first place to start off with it all. It's all that weird. But if you guys couldn't get the gist here, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like anything to do with Wizbit. I don't want to watch Wizbit. Comment down below, have you guys ever seen the show and what do you guys think of Wizbit? Would you guys have watched it as a kid? Me? No thank you. I'm glad I didn't watch this one. So the next show we're going to be talking about is um, also an educational one, but not just any kind of educational one. A religiously based educational show. And I do want to put a disclaimer, I'm fine with having beliefs. I do not judge anyone's beliefs because I myself am personally religious, but just the way that they chose chose characters for the show and directed the show is all around very unsettling, especially the main character. So the main character of the show is Pasalti, and he is a book, specifically a Bible. The show is called Pasalti Songs for Little Praisers. Hey kids, it's time for Salty Songs for Little Praisers. This was a musical show that was meant to teach kids the Bible, featuring a giant blue talking singing man dressed as a Bible book. His name was Salty. They literally put a man in this costume and just painted his face blue and called him the Bible, which is already a lot to take in. During the show, he ran around creepily amongst the screen and interacted with young children the entire time. Like I said, by no means am I trying to make fun of anybody's religion here because like I said, I am religious and I also have religious beliefs. But if I was a little kid and they put this on TV and they told me, that this is how I'm going to learn something, I would be more terrified by just looking at this man's face than the whole concept that I'm trying to get the gist of. I'd be scared and traumatized by just this show, let alone any of the beliefs on the side. Just the way that they filmed this was not right. <laughs> Even creepier was that all the adults casted onto the show that were dressed as animals, such as sheep, mice, or other creatures, had face paint slapped onto them really creepily, and they had to play ridiculous voice roles, like they made their voices sound ridiculous. Can't have much of a praise party without a cast. <laughs> Instead of just making like a full mascot costume, they're like, nah, let's leave the full face and just slap some paint on there and make them be a part of the show. Did not help with anything. There was also really creepy talking creatures, books and boxes during the show that were like animatronic looking. <laughs> I don't know why, if it's supposed to be a religious show. Everything about this show in general just gave off very unsettling, disturbing, traumatizing vibe. So the next show has another really scary creature. Um, this one is called Terra Hawks and this thing on the screen that I'm putting right here, I guess that is part of the Terra Hawks show. The show is really traumatizing, like all the rest of them. This is a sci-fi children's show created by Gary Anderson. The series was set in 2020 after an alien force has destroyed NASA's Mars base and Earth apparently is under threat. So we've already passed 2020 and we're in the future of the show now, which that literally tells us how old this show is. A small organization, the Terra Hawks, is set up to defend the planet. From Hawk Nest, their secret base in South America, they develop a sophisticated weapon to prepare the battles to come. But the problem with this show was literally just this one character on the screen that was literally traumatizing all the kids. Yes, this was one of the main characters of the show. This character had gray hair, brown eyes, a wrinkly tree-like texture to her skin, almost looked witch-like with long claws, and I can tell you, under all all the reddit forums I've seen, any kid who had this show played to them when they were younger says that they were just completely traumatized after watching the show, they had a hard time sleeping at night, and would often have nightmares just thinking about the character, so I can totally see why. So the next show is Nightmare Feel, and I want to apologize, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm gonna try to say it. It's Slanko Retifak Palacha. 
I don't know how to say that. Like I said, it's in another language, so forgive me if I said it wrong. Bradifak Placha is a character from an educational children's TV show. He served as one of the hosts of the show, and this show, and especially this character, is famous worldwide for creating a lot of nightmare feel for the kids who watched it. Bradifak is a puppet that appears with a human peach skin, he has messy thin white hair, blue eyes, red lips, light yellow buck teeth, large round cheeks, a very long giraffe-like neck, and a huge nose. He is wide and stands about 7 feet tall and he has 4 legs. <laughs> What the heck? He wears a large blanket that is red, white, and light blue with patches on it, and he also wears red gloves in the series, whereas outside of the show, he wears white gloves. The way the puppetry works is two people actually hide underneath a blanket with a sleeve for them, with one of the puppeteers having their arm out of the neckline of the blanket in a peach color sleeve, holding and controlling Radifax's head. That's really creepy to imagine or even think about people inside of there controlling this huge, cursed looking puppet. Radifax is actually a silly character. His, he's supposed to be silly and goofy, according to the show. He's actually slightly a confused person, and he's really enthusiastic. For say, he would say things that would mislead the children who watch the show, allowing the children to correct him, so he'd be like, I don't know, what color is that? Or, you know, kind of like some Dora the Explorer type stuff. And this was a Slovakian TV show, I'm pretty sure. If you grew up in Slovakia or had seen this, let me know as a kid if this character terrified you, because according to the internet, it caused nightmare feel for a lot, a a lot of people. Like a lot of people, specifically this was the character that they hated more than any other kids show character. And that's speaking words, it's made it into the top like most terrifying kids show characters ever, possibly ranks number one. So the next show is one that I've never heard of until I did research for today's video for you guys. And this one is called Telechat. So Telechat had puppets and these puppets were not your typical puppets. They were very human-like looking animals and this is where I have a problem with the show. These puppets were supposed to be animals but they just felt so human-like. The way that they dressed, the way they talked and held their posture and pretty much presented themselves felt like half animal, half human. And that's where it became really unsettling. So Telechat is a French-Belgian puppet show created by Belgian director Henry. It ran for three seasons between 1983 and 1985 with a total of 234, yes, 234 episodes of these cursed little creatures. And they were each five minutes. So at least they weren't long episodes. They were only five minute episodes, thank goodness. They were a parody of new shows and they were hosted by two funny animals, a tomcat named Groucha and an ostrich named Lola. It featured a variety of sentient objects and revolved around the idea that real life elementary particles known as gluons were the souls of objects. Very strange concept for a TV show. With its surreal and sometimes dark humor, the series enjoys cult status in France and Belgium. According to the producer of the show, a number of episodes were even dubbed in the UK on Disney Channel? What? I don't even know how that's possible. Although apparently many episodes were rejected by Disney on the grounds that Lola showed too much cleavage. Ooh. Isn't that the ostrich? An ostrich with boobs? Excuse me? <laughs> They're a little too human-like. So take it as you guys would like to, but for me personally, the idea of these very human-like animals just came off very wrong, okay? I didn't like it. I didn't like any of it. I didn't like the fact that they were dressing and presenting themselves the way they did with just the whole look. I don't know. They could have made really cute puppets, but no. They made those things. And that leads us to our last scary kid show that I used to watch and actually enjoy that some people apparently didn't. And that's Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yes, it did scare me a little bit as a kid, but I still enjoyed it in a really unsettling way. Courage the Cowardly Dog is an American animated comedy horror television series created by John Dilworth for Cartoon Network and distributed by Warner Bros. The title character is a dog who lives with an elderly couple in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And each episode, the trio is thrown into a bizarre, frequently disturbing, and often paranormal or supernatural adventure. The series is known for its dark, surreal humor and its atmosphere. So you guys might be like, what's so bad about that? Well, rumor has it, according to the internet, this show was actually based off a real elderly couple and their dog who lived in the middle of nowhere and had some sort of devil-linked house, and that's where it gets creepy. People say it's based on a real scenario, and during the episodes, if you look closely, they throw in subtle hints to the devil, and it gets kind of dark. This is a kid show, mind you not. This is where it kind of has problems, and it actually freaks me out looking back at it, that I was sitting there watching that, and my family had no clue that I was watching a show animated, potentially linking to darker things. So they subtly threw in, like, numbers and animations of 
the devil, and they were showing this to little kids, yes. Eight-year-old me was sitting there munching on macaroni and chocolate chip cookies watching a show about cursed paranormal with two elderly people who own a dog, and I guess I enjoyed it. <laughs> What do you guys think? Did courage ever scare you guys as a kid? How do you guys feel about all these kid show characters? Comment down below What do you guys think is the most disturbing kid show character of all time? Because there's definitely a lot of them out there. Also comment down below what other videos you guys would like me to make next for you guys I have a lot of exciting stuff coming up and I don't want to spoil any of it But I will say I have some very exciting stuff coming up So be sure to subscribe to join the family and comment down below what you guys want to see in a future video It's been your girl Lizzie. Thank you all so much for watching today's video and I'll see all of you lovely people in the next one. Bye guys!